this. He smiled. Not, not to talk out of school, but somebody in here has had that test done. <clears throat> and probably 70% of the people that I test have a hidden gut infection. And it's so basic. That's the thing. That's not rocket science. That is a different aspect of looking at people's health. Because if you have a gut system problem, your immune system is going to be taxed. The other thing is food sensitivity. And I don't run these tests on every person, just but these are some things we may look at with people. Gluten sensitivity. I run the best lab test in the, in the United States to look at your immune system's response to gluten. I don't, I'm not looking at if you're celiac. I want to know is if every time you eat gluten, is your immune system revved up to the point that it becomes a peak? The other food sensitivities are common food sensitivities, delayed reactions, things like that. Adrenal fatigue. Does everybody know what your adrenals are? Their gland sits on your kidney, and they release a stress hormone, cortisol. And if you have a hidden infection, you're always releasing cortisol. If you have high sympathetic stress, you're always releasing cortisol. If you find out that you have cancer, you're always releasing cortisol because you're stressed. But so what happens is the first thing before you get adrenal fatigue is you release cortisol, release cortisol, release cortisol until your adrenals get too tired. And the problem with having excess cortisol is it ages. People that have high stress, what do they get? Wrinkles, right? And that's because excess cortisol thins your barrier system. We have major barrier systems. They keep things out and they keep things in. Our gut system is a barrier system. High levels of cortisol tires the key gut. They allow your immune system to start being triggered all the time. Our lung barrier system gets thin. People get exposed to things through here and through here, and they get into our lungs, and our lungs can't keep the things out, and they cross the barrier systems, and you're sick, chronically sick. And your immune system is taxed. Our skin barrier system, and there's one other barrier system, our brain barrier system. And when you have problems with your brain barrier system, that means that I have an infection and it crosses over into my brain and it activates microglial cells, which are your immune system for your brain, and people start having changes in cognition and how their body runs itself and how we think and decision making and brain fog and fatigue. So we look at people from an adrenal standpoint. Blood sugar regulation. This is probably one of the biggest links to people having problems like cancer. Cancer loves glucose. Everybody hear of a PET scan? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what they look at? What do they look at, Doc? Well, in a PET scan, they take a radioactive dye or molecule and tag it to glucose because they know the cancer cells are very hungry for glucose, so it'll preferentially light up the cells that are using the most glucose. So clearly, that speaks to Dr. Potter's so, point. So, don't you think a diet that has good sugar regulation is extremely important? There's been studies that I've looked at with people that have brain cancers, and they went on a ketogenic diet, meaning they starved the cancer for glucose by having a good type of diet, like coconut based, some coconut oils, things like that, better oils and yeah. fuels, and it starved the cancer and it fed the brain. Because the brain loves good fuel and that keeps under high energy. Energy production at the cellular level. I do a lot of chronic conditions. And the number one people have as a complaint, secondary to their labels, 
his prodigal behavior. And what that means is they're having problems taking the food we eat and metabolizing it through the Krebs cycle, which is our energy production cell, to make ATP. ATP is the power pack battery for every cell in your body. It's very important for people to have good battery packs. We got 11 pounds of battery packs in our body. ATP, 11 pounds. So one test we do is an organic acid test. I love this test for two reasons. It's easy to do. It's a urinary test. And it comes back with this great 10 page report. It shows me all the processes to go through to make ATP, energy for your cell, and it shows me all the blockages you have in that pathway because of nutritional deficiency. That's a powerful test. But you know what's even better? It gives me a report of the nutritional status that you need and the amounts. Oh, I like it for one other reason too. I don't send you with a shopping list down to the store and say, oh, but this, 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 and make you make it. They work with a company. I call them up and I say, yeah, this is the patient's thing. Let's look at this session. Yeah, let's do that. And I also want to add this too with it. And they make me a 90-day blend of a supplement that you can mix up with water or juice or coconut milk for your nutritional status for energy production. Does it work? <laughs> it's an organic acid test. It also shows detoxification pathway problems. And that's what I'm going to talk about here, systemic detoxification. Your liver is your chemistry factory. It's the most amazing thing. It makes what you need. But the other thing it has to do is it has to detoxify your body. So there's two phases of detoxification in the liver. Phase one is a reduction oxidation. What that means is it takes things and churns them up. It donates an electron. I forget all the high-tech things it does in a reduction of oxidation. You can ask the brain of the book here. But what I can say, this is what it does. It gets things ready that are fat soluble toxins to get out of your body. Phase two liver conjugation donates and makes those fat soluble water soluble. So your toxins that are fat soluble that are stuck in your cells, it makes them water soluble. Why is that important? Because I pee, I breathe, part of breathing is water, respiration, right? Bile, bowel movements, sweat, saliva, we get things out of our body. So you got to have really good phase two detoxification support. And there's some great nutrition to do that. And you have to be hydrated. <clears throat> Right? Other things we may do. The whole goal is to decrease your toxic load or toxic burden. Oral collation. Coffee enemas. Everybody's like, whoa. <laughs> We're going into uncharted territory here. Wrong this end. is the United States. We don't, for we, no, we don't get talk get about <laughs> things like that. <laughs> There's some profound <laughs> science behind There's some that. profound science. I love it. Yeah. Coffee enemas are one of the main things I can just tell you. If you come in my office and you spend money and you want me to help you, I'm going to tell you if you have cancer, 
I want to help you, and I want to help you change your life. And if it comes to the part of you have to do the top of your list daily, guess what? Do the damn thing. <laughs> right? And live. And live. <laughs> because it's a major detoxification pathway. It helps your liver open up and get toxins out. And it's not so complicated. I would never have you do anything that I haven't tried. Okay. It's not it's not complicated at all. Um detoxification. So other things we do. Okay. Bioenergetic medicine. You can take frequencies and test your body. And this equipment that we use stimulates the immune cell response. So people that we have come to our office, we do a workup on you for three or four days, and we have you do a lot of things at home, but one of them is we have you get this machine, to, we're gonna lease it to you. If you really love it, you can buy it. And we're gonna set you up for frequencies. We're gonna scan you for about an hour and a half, figure out what frequencies do you have for bacteria, viruses, cancer cells. And you're gonna sleep with this thing. And this machine is gonna all night long bombard you with frequencies to support stimulating your immune cell and creating an environment that's toxic to cancer cells to break that down. It's awesome technology. How or where is it? It's a bowl. It's like a big fluorescent bowl. It's a machine. It's in a case. You can't break it. And you're going to sit next to it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to bombard you with frequencies to stimulate your vital energy fields. Now this is the thing. Next to coffee animus, this is the other weirdest part, right? Because we're talking about stuff that we don't see. Yet you go get an EKG and you don't think much about it, right? They're measuring your energy fields. It's bioenergy medicine. IV infusion therapy. Yes, he discovered number one. Yeah, we're out here. No, nice. Go ahead. Linus Pauling. That was his, uh, he won a Nobel Prize. Linus Pauling was uh, one of the biggest advocates of a delivery of high dose vitamin C for cancer. I just want to tell you. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, the thing is, is cancer loves glucose and blood supply. So, how would you like to deliver things to that cancer? Through the blood supply, right? And vitamin C has been shown to kill cancer cells. You can't take enough orally to make a difference. Just so you know. Take some. But I'm going to just type you need high doses of fluid. Ozone therapy. That's where they hyperoxygenate red blood cells. So we remove 250 cc's of your blood and they infuse it with ozone and then when they pass it back UVBIP. I said that right doc? Yes. It exposes that red blood cells to ultraviolet light. And that kills viruses, bacterial, fungus, and reduces your toxic load. But you know what else it does? It causes those cells to break down. And you know, when those cells break down and you have broken particles of a virus, your immune system detects it. Therefore, it stimulates an immune response. Your ketone system gets activated. Nutrition. Next to having a cancer, whether you treated chemo, surgical, 